Good morning. For our devotions today, let me read to you Psalm 63, verses 2 to 4. It says here, so I, I, so I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up my hands. Lord, that is our prayer. Lord, may our lips declare your praises. Lord, may our worship be something that is focused on to you. And I pray that even as we worship and as we listen to your word today, may you align our hearts to your purposes. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship God. We adore Him. Oh, 
we are looking at different psalms in the Bible and how these psalms can help us create a spirit, an attitude, a posture that abides in God. And today we are going to read Psalm 63. Let me read to you Psalm 63. It says here, A psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. O God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your hand, in your name, I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food, and my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have, help, you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings, I will sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. But those who seek to destroy my life shall go down into the depths of the earth. They shall be given over to the power of the sword. They shall be a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. All who swear by him shall exult. For the mouths of liars will be stopped. You know, the first thing that we can observe here to help us understand at the text that we just looked at and the setting to which is the background of this is David was the one who wrote this psalm. It says there, a psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. Now, some scholars attribute this to 1 Samuel 22 or maybe 1 Samuel 23. The background of that was the time when King Saul was chasing David because Saul knows that David would be king. Naalala niyo po yun? Naalala natin yun, di ba? David was anointed to be king and Saul was pursuing David. David, in turn, was running for his life with some people with him. There was a time also that those who helped David, that's in 1 Samuel chapter 22, those who helped and support David got hurt and killed. They were also oppressed. And there's another time in chapter 23 that Saul nearly got David. Yung tipong Onti na lang yung distance, mahuhuli na ni, ni Saul si David. And what makes this psalm, the psalm that we just read, even more painful is in 1 Samuel 23, Jonathan, Saul's son, King Saul's son, and David's friend reminded David that he will be king. We can see that in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 23, verse 17. Sabi ni Jonathan dito, 1 Samuel chapter 23, verse 17. And Jonathan said to David, Do not fear, for the hand of Saul my father shall not find you. You shall be king over Israel, and I shall be next to you. Saul my father knows this. Kaya ang sakit eh. Jonathan was reminding David that you will be king. My father will never find you. And yet towards the end of 1 Samuel chapter 23, we read the story of Saul almost catching David. You see, there's this promise from God. There's already a confirmation from God. Samuel anointed David. Remember that? And not only that, there were also confirmation from the people. Jonathan acknowledged that David will be king. Saul knows that David will be king. The people around them knows that David will be king. Yet the effects, the circumstances around David, not only went from positive to a negative way, but it seems like it went from bad to worse. And that was the wilderness that David experienced. It's also a literal wilderness. If you read 1 Samuel chapter 22 and 23, David was running away in the wilderness. It's a literal wilderness where people tend to bring their own, their cattle. But there's really nothing much to see there. Meron lang mga rocks or mga bato na pwedeng pagtaguan. But more than being a literal wilderness, it's also a figurative wilderness where the circumstances bring David farther and farther from the promises of God. It's also a time and a place where at any time the enemies could come to get David. Wilderness. 
That's how wilderness looked like. The background of our psalm that we read, that's how wilderness looked like in the life of David. That's how wilderness looked like um, in the context that we've seen. And the reality is God's people can experience wilderness as well. Despite the promises that God gives us, despite the assurances that people around us give us, wilderness can still come in our lives. Alam naman ni David na siya na yung king. Sinabi na lahat ng mga tao na siya na yung magiging king. Pero bakit parang mas lumalayo si David sa pangako ng Panginoon? What was David's first line in this psalm? Because that first line sets the course of the rest of the psalm. In Psalm 63, after reading the background, a psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah, David starts this psalm by saying, O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a dry and weary land where there is no water. David likened his soul to a dry and weary land that has no water and is waiting for rain. David was waiting for God to move. David declared that God is still his God in this dry and weary land. The words used by David here, earnestly seek, soul thirst, flesh faint. The wilderness created desperation in David's life. Wilderness can create desperation in our soul. That statement, that wilderness creates desperation in our soul, it's not just for the Christian. Even if someone is not a Christian, that reality is something that a person can experience. Pag may wilderness, pag may humahabol na, pag desperado na, pag um, alangani na, desperation comes in our souls. Now, people try to meet that desperation in different ways. When people feel tired or burnout or desperate or dry, people tend to meet that need in a different way. Some do it biologically. Some do it with exercise, food, modification, diet, sleep, medications. Some do it from a social standpoint, meeting with friends, building relationships, entering into relationships. Some do it in a leisure standpoint, the latest series, binge watch na to, or the latest K-drama. Some do it from a religious standpoint, being busy in ministry. Now, all of those things are not wrong in itself. But as we will see in this psalm, the wilderness can do more than just force us to cover it up with our man-made solutions. Minsan kasi pag nasa wilderness tayo, gusto natin agad makaalis. But let me show, let me show us three things that the wilderness can do for our souls. First thing is the wilderness forces us to focus on God. Verses 2 to 4, So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up my hands. The word so, verse 2 begins with so. Afterwards, the effect of the wilderness the wilderness of David, the effect of David seeking, thirsting, fainting to wait for God to move, it led him to look upon God in his sanctuary and focus on God's power and glory. It led him to focus on God. And in that focus, David found a new reason to praise and bless God with his lips. At ano yun? Yung steadfast love ni God. And then as he thinks about this steadfast love, he makes a declaration that it is better than life. You know, sometimes for us, when we experience a wilderness, we tend to not just cover it up with our man-made solutions. For some of us here, we tend to be angry against God. Nagtatampo tayo kay Lord. And I just want to encourage us, let the wilderness guide us to behold God's glory and power. And let that lead us to praise Him. The next thing that the wilderness can do is that the wilderness invites us to enjoy God's intervention in the past. Look at this. 
My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food, and my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. During the wilderness and the uncertainty of the future, David has nothing solid to hold on to. Hindi sigurado yung future niya. Hindi sigurado yung present circumstances niya. Muntik na nga siyang mahuli ni Saul. But the only thing that he can hold on to with such certainty are the times that God had shown himself faithful to him. The times that God had provided for him, saved him, upheld him. The words remember and meditate were the things that David did in the wilderness. And the result of that is that David was satisfied. You know, I can't help but imagine Maybe David was thinking about the time that David was able to deliver a sheep from the mouth of a bear or a lion. I, I, I imagine a time, maybe in this time, David was recalling, remembering, meditating on the time that he defeated Goliath. Hindi siya sigurado sa future niya at alanganin yung present niya. But because of this wilderness, it forced him to remember and meditate Think through, think again and again and again and again the faithfulness of God. You know, in the wilderness, let us take the time to remember how God helped us in the past, how God has answered some of our desperate prayers in the past. Yung mga alanganing dasal natin nung nakaraan. When we look back, we see God's faithfulness. And that is something we can hold on to. The third thing that the wilderness teaches us is that the wilderness reminds us of God's promise and our calling. Verses 9 to 11, But those who seek to destroy my life shall go down into the depths of the earth. They shall be given over to the power of the sword. They shall be a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. All who swear by him shall exalt, for the mouths of liars will be stopped. David looked to God for protection and deliverance the same way that God did for his life before. God will bring down those who seek to destroy my life, David said. That pretty much describes how David dealt with Saul's oppression of him. Remember that story? Diba? Si Saul, paulit-ulit na hinahabol si David at meron pang ang pagkakataon that David could have killed Saul and made himself king. But David kept on deferring back to God. David kept on saying, I, sh- I do not want to hurt the Lord's anointed. Okay? Si Lord na naglagay sa kanya dyan. Ay- ayoko siyang saktan. That's how David was. And that's how David is in this psalm. Lord, you're the one who's going to avenge me. But what I want to focus on is in verse 11. Those who seek to destroy David will go down. That's David trusting in God's intervention. But look at verse 11. It says here, But the king. But the king. Why is that interesting? Because remember, David was anointed as king by Samuel. He was promised to be king. Everyone around him knows that he will be king. Saul does. Saul does. Jonathan does. But he is not yet the king. And if at anything... His current circumstances doesn't look kingly. He is in the wilderness. He's not in the palace. He has some renegade people following following him, not soldiers. And yet, in the wilderness, David said, But the king shall rejoice in God. The wilderness has a way to remind us of God's promise and our calling that our other circumstances can't. You know, lately, my son is very much into science, and we, wanna, we want to ride that momentum. We're trying to teach him the different scientific methods, and we're trying to do lots of experiments. And of course, as we know, in an experiment, we take into account everything, the environment that can affect the results. We look at the cost. If we do this, what will be the effect? We make a hypothesis. When we see this effect, we want to trace the cost. Now, why am I saying this? 
therapist. Let's think about this. If all our lives can be manipulated by man, then we don't really need God. If David can manipulate his way into becoming king, there's nothing, there's no need of God. But a wilderness humbles the man. The environment doesn't produce the promise God says he will. The circumstances doesn't show the calling that we have. The wilderness is the gap from the promise and the reality. And it is from that gap that conviction, hope, and faith can arise. David said, but the king. David has not yet taken the throne of kingship, but he knows who he is and is calling. But the king, the king will rejoice in God. I am God's king, and this king will rejoice in God. You know, an application for us. Let's continually declare God's promises and our identity despite the wilderness situation. You know, as I end, you may be in the wilderness now. Some of us, you know, some of those wilderness may be our fault. It may be a consequence of what we did in the past, a kind of discipline from God. Or for some, it may look completely unfair. And maybe it is. Wala naman talaga tayong ginawang mali, pero bakit nasa wilderness pa tayo? Parang si David. We may not exactly know why God brought us to our wilderness and how long we are going to be in it. But the reality is we are there. And it creates this desperation in our hearts. That's not a bad thing. Lean on it. And let it lead us to focus on God. Remind us of His past interventions, promises, and our calling. You know, as I end, let me declare again Psalm 63, verse 1. O God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Let me pray. Father, we thank you for that reminder that you are the source of security that we have. Lord, even for some of my brothers and sisters here who are, who may be in the wilderness, may this be a time that we will know you in a different way. We would know you deeper. We would experience you in a new way. And Lord, I ask even today that even in the midst of all this wilderness, Lord, may, we, may you remind us of our purpose and our calling, that we will not be sidetracked by the current realities, that we forget of your past faithfulness and your future promises to us. Remind us of your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you for joining us in our morning worship and prayer. Let me just bless all of us here. Lord, I bless everyone who's watching. May your peace and goodness and mercy follow us in everything that we do today. In Jesus' name.